Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Monday edition. And of course, uh, well, we'll go from Townsville all the way down to uh, the beautiful part of uh, New South Wales. Of course, that is Coffs Harbour. And of course, speak with the Breakers, uh, of course, women's football team who uh, won their grand final a couple of weeks ago in a pretty amazing fashion, I must say. Uh, watching that game and of course uh, we've got four very special guests from the Breakers team to tell us all about that premiership success uh, they had a couple of weeks ago. Thanks uh, all for you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I will get Ishi to introduce yourselves and obviously what position all you played on grand final day. Uh, okay I'll start. I'm Katega. I play centre half forward. I'm the captain for the Breakers. Yeah I'm Carissa, I played in the back line on Grand Holiday. Hi, I'm G'day. Emily, and I play like full forward and rock rover. G'day, I'm Sarah. I play in the full back. Now, tell us a bit about the season, and obviously with the uncertainty that was with COVID um, back in March, were either of you optimistic at all that you were going to get a season? Yeah, look, I think it was it was a bit up in the up in the air in the sense that um, we were doing preseason essentially since November last year, so it's been a pretty, pretty big season for us. But um, I think with with the well earned break, it gave us a little, you know, that bit of time off to reassess, and um, we were definitely pretty keen to get back out on the track. So as a as a team, we we're pretty unanimous to say, look, let's let's give it a shot. So. Um, I, 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 going into the season, you sort of think, oh, well, you know, if you are to win, is it is it uh, as good a premiership to win during COVID? But I, actually by the end of the season, and I think this is echoed by some of the AFL teams, it's actually been the hardest season to win a premiership. So mm -hmm. pretty proud of that. Uh, tell us a bit about the season. And I guess was there a particular, I guess, game that really turned it all around that you felt, you know, we, we can go all the way and win it all? Even just from the start, I think we came out this year with a bit more grit because we came so close last year. Um, just gelling on that first day, like normally your first game's a bit up in the air, but I think um, we all worked really well. And I think just winning that first game gave us that confidence to go all the way. Tell us a bit about the final series leading up to the grand final. Go on, Vince. You'd have to... Um... You were one of the best on. You'd have to tell this story well. Yeah, no, it was good. The whole the whole season was an absolute smash. And just the year was, we absolutely dominated, which was great coming from last year, the ending of last year. But this year it felt a lot a lot better, <laughs> didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I think, I think we, were the, we were one of the fitter teams. We were, we were the fittest team. Um, and our midfield is absolutely dominant. So we have the best midfield in the in the competition. So absolute powerhouses. Emily's um, part of that and actually won best on ground um, on the day of the grand final. So, um, you know, we don't like to reiterate that to her too much. She, she sort of gets away with that. Uh, she 100% she deserved that. She absolutely smashed that. <laughs> yeah. So um, don't put her in front of goals, but can definitely run through the midfield. <laughs> well. um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we, you know, and that's that's a credit to the team. So we've we've come our so our club's been around for three years. So, um, you know, being from we won one game in our first season. We were minor premiers last year, got knocked out in the finals, and to fully take it home this year has been a real credit to the girls, and especially the ones that have been, you know, at least the last couple of seasons, just day in day out. You know, really um, slogging hard. Um, we'd had one particular player on our team that um she actually won club woman of the uh well Beth, i guess coaches award this year who um in in the short two years has done an acl has uh, split her head open has had multiple multiple fractures. times um and and this year she um di i think in the second game basically dislocated and broke both of her bones in her arm got steel plated, was back at training three days later and um, returned for the grand final. So um, amazing. So I think that's just echoes how hard everyone has worked. And yeah, she probably shouldn't be playing football anymore, but. <laughs> uh, now, Emily, I have to ask you this question, being uh, named best on ground in the grand final. <laughs> um, now, Em, uh, I guess, number one, were you surprised 
And number two, now I believe, did they announce the best on ground while you were having the premiership team photo? Um, no, someone, I think another award got announced while that it was like getting, we were getting our photo, but 100% I was surprised. Um, I didn't, even, they called my name and I kind of didn't realise I got the award for a good minute or so. And then I looked at Katika and she's like, get up, get up. And I was like, what for? <laughs> and it was because I got the award. So I was very, very honoured and surprised. Um, I think they could, it could have gone to anyone. It, I don't know if it was fully me, like I deserved it. But like, yeah, I definitely, I was very surprised and happy that it was me that got it on the end. <laughs> Yeah, didn't you ask? Didn't you ask the lady when you got up there to get your medal? You're like, oh, "What's this for?" <laughs> yes, <laughs> I said, "What's this award?" Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, that's what you get for not listening. <laughs> I was wrapped up in winning. We just won, and then two minutes later, they were doing awards. So I was a bit up in the air. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. I'm definitely not going to ask what she responded back to you with. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so um, now, I guess, tell us about the grand final. I got the chance to watch it because it was live streamed um, on the day. Was there a particular point in the game that you felt the game was won? Because I actually felt watching the game that you had full control of that game. Uh, and I thought you had the game won from a, probably about midway through the third quarter onwards. Is that how you saw it? Um, personally, I did not think we'd like got the game until the last five minutes. I mean, I can, it's so different from watching it and playing, but it's so easy to get the ball up the other end in women's AFL. So I find that there's always that bit of, I don't know, uncertainty of how quickly someone's, the other team's going to get it up there. Um, it was awesome that we, like, looking back, that, yeah, we did hold a lot of the um, ball most of the game. But for me, I didn't find that, like, I was confident the whole game. Like, it, yeah, it was just until, like, the last five minutes and I was like, maybe we've actually got this. I was in the back line the whole game and it absolutely petrifies you yeah. with the with the last couple of minutes just or the last quarter actually you never know if they're just going to all of a sudden switch on and come back like and you're standing there just waiting for it and waiting for it but by the time it hit probably the last minute <laughs> that's the only time I calmed down and was yeah, like exactly. oh we've actually got this we've got it now <laughs> now Carissa I need to ask you this question obviously uh, you came up to New South Wales from of course the lockdown Melbourne uh, of course uh, I guess what did this mean to you and especially you know considering that um, you know you had a chance to play footy this year considering that Melbourne obviously the season just completely went out the door yeah look it meant a huge amount to me my season had already gotten cancelled in Melbourne and I was lucky enough to be able to leave and come up here and work from my parents place and kind of got in touch with the Coffs team to just come. I was originally just going to train for a bit and, yeah, was able to play the whole season, which, you know, for me it was, it was a huge thing. And not knowing anyone up here, I was able to make some friends and, yeah, it was great. And to come away with this this year, it was, yeah, big deal. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, she's not promised that she's not moving back to Victoria. So we feel a bit <laughs> Um, and especially because she actually said to me in the first week, can I just borrow your socks for this, like, one game I'm going to play? <laughs> I haven't got those socks back and I don't want them back. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're staying now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I think you're in. I think you're in. You're, you're staying. <laughs> well, I think... Well, Welcome to Cuffs Harbour, Carissa. <laughs> <laughs> that one just reopened today. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> No, Although no one wanted to go, it. yeah, no one wanted to go the first couple of sessions, did they? They thought, oh, who's this shit in Victoria? <laughs> yeah, my number plates still get weird looks around here. <laughs> oh. um, well, you actually answered my next question about if you're coming back to Melbourne next year uh, and play. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask um, how I know you played for a pretty fantastic women's club down here um, in St Kilda City, um, the Sharks. Uh, did any of your team? 
did anyone, did any of them, um, I guess, fully supported you and uh, throughout the whole journey through this uh, North Coast uh, competition? Yeah, look, I must um, do a shout out to all the St Kilda girls. They, a lot of them have gotten around me while I've been up here and been following the games that have been live streamed. So that's been, you know, really good support. They've really gotten around it. I guess I have to ask uh, the, the, um, your three amazing teammates with you. Um, I guess how special to have uh, Chris, and especially, I guess, someone who's played um, at a pretty pretty high level, I say, down at, down at St Kilda City, um, who's, of course, been in, uh, that club's been involved in a lot of finals and a lot of premierships along the way. I guess how special to have, have experience like Chris, uh, of course, coming from a footy um, state. Oh, she's been an absolute gem to have in the back line. She's always questioning, oh, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? I'm like, Riz, you know exactly what you're doing. Just smash <laughs> it, mate. Just smash it. I was just going to say, it's been awesome. I mean, we're such a close team as it is. And, like, it's also good to get someone else in from, the, like, I don't know, a completely different state as well. Like, it was awesome to see her perspective of the game because, yes, there is a bit more of a confidence, I guess, in that in that state compared to us. So um, it was awesome to have to play against her and with her, not against her. Yeah, and I think just because um, cause Riss has grown up with AFL um, – and I think once you grow up, that you you have an expectation of what a club is and and how you you act on certain days, like you know, silly Saturday, silly Sunday, Mad Monday. And look, um, Riss definitely performed really well. On that day, <laughs> she knew exactly what to bring for the club. And I don't know if you can't really see it on the photos here, Riss, but you've even you got the hair colour in um, for the team in your hair. So no biggest what about him because I think that culture piece is what's so unspoken about a club that the camaraderie, the teammateship, those special days. And I think um, Riz definitely emanated that when she she came to our club and really helped with that culture piece. That's... I mean, like, honestly, that's that's full credit to the Coffs Club. Um, you know, everyone has welcomed me so much. And, you know, the whole club has been amazing. It's They've really got a good thing going there. So I think anyone that is in the area who's thinking about playing footy should definitely come and get get around it. They're, they're a great team. Yeah. Uh... We'll get to the celebrations uh, a little bit later on. Um, now, I had to ask, uh, of course, I'll talk to the captain about this one. Um, I guess how good was to hold the Premiership Cup uh, before everyone completely swarmed onto you and your coach? Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that was great. I think just because it's just an amazing feeling. We've worked so hard for it. Um, and look... The girls are just so special. Like everyone just being able to do that and, and achieve that together, like as a family, was just unreal. And there's a height discrepancy between me and the coach. So it was sort of, you know, there was a bit of a tilt on the <laughs> cup hold. Uh, but no, but no better feeling. And especially when you've got all the girls around you and they just want to touch the cup and we're all about it. It's fantastic. And that cup um, had, you know, many drinks out of it over the weekend. So that followed. So everyone got, got their hold. Uh, now, I have to ask, I can see all of you wearing your Premiership medals around your necks, which I'll get all of you to show to our viewers. There it is. Uh, now, the question I want to ask all of you is, how long did you wear your medals around your necks for? And did any of you sleep with it? Emily, Emily, yeah. you answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I haven't taken it off actually, so <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I got until the after party, so I'm going to say around 2 a.m. Sunday morning, and I'd come to a realization that I'd actually lost it, and then it came back in my possession about a week ago. So you didn't even you didn't even have it at the co like at the cost like straight after the game at four o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Um, I slept with that thing around my neck for days. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Sorry, Em, I've got to ask this question. Um, uh, when did it come to the realisation you lost it? And number two, you, I'm sure you didn't lose both your premiership medal and your best, best on ground medal, <laughs> did you? 
That's actually a good point. No. Um. Okay. So our like our awards came like it was a medal, but in like a plaque. So I didn't actually have to wear that one. Okay. So that was that was fine at home. But um, a few of the boys like wanted to wear it. So. Oh. They were- and then I just kind of like realized that someone had given it to someone and then I, they didn't know where that one was. So yeah, it was around Sunday morning sometime. And then I had to go and I hadn't, I hadn't got it back in my possession. So yeah, <laughs> not good. <laughs> how did you get it back? I'm, I'm actually intrigued to know how you got it back. Um, someone gave it to my dad at the presentation <laughs> night. That's I that wasn't that presentation fine. Night. <laughs> <laughs> The present presentation night you didn't show up for. Okay, that's a fine. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Go me. But and anyway. the season trip on Emily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paid enough fines, takes. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, we'll get to the fine system a bit later on too. By the sounds of that one, uh, gr- give me some great questions to us in this interview. Um. <laughs> Now, I have to ask, how did all you get involved in footy and why did you choose it? I've been netball all my life um, until last year. And my dad um, went to Assumption College in Victoria and he's like grown up around AFL. So he's always had a soft spot for it. And um, so last year he took me down and I haven't looked back since. So, yeah, last year was my first year and I love it. You're probably being I've, um, oh. Emily because her dad's actually the skills coach and you have a, like a brilliant family history of AFL players. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, Vince, you go. No, I was just saying I came from um, from soccer. So soccer in Coffs Harbour was going a bit downhill for the women's side. Um, just same team, same this. Getting a bit boring. I've been playing. I was playing soccer since I was like eight. So I wanted to change and... One of my friends said, oh, I'm starting, I'm, I've been playing AFL and I'm going, oh, no, oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, that's a complete change. And she goes, oh, no, just come down to training. I was like, oh, okay. Came down to training and um, started running K after K after K. And I, <laughs> I was shaking my head. <laughs> but, um, but um, no, nah, I ended up loving it. The main thing that drew me in was actually the girls who was playing. Like, I, I just had – a great connection with everyone I spoke to and everyone was so welcoming compared to coming from soccer like even like the men's side was like oh yeah you're gonna love it it's gonna be great everyone was just so welcoming welcoming and then yeah and uh, I just training after training I just absolutely loved it I will not like won't go back I'm AFL for life now <laughs> yeah, <woo. laughs> and um I like I grew up in Canberra and my brother got me into AFL um, huge Richmond supporters, go Tigers. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, AFL has really, you know, connected me to so many people. I, When I moved to Melbourne, you know, I was able to join a team down there and my love for the sport grew even more when I was down there. You kind of go hard or go home when you're in Melbourne. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been great coming up here also. Um, just the community aspect of it and, yeah, it's great. Mm. Yeah, and I'm from WA, so it's the main, like a bit like Victoria, it's the main sport over there. So I grew up with AFL and um, it, look, when I moved to Goss Harbour two and a half years ago, like everyone sort of said here, yeah, it's just the way you, you make friends, you build a family, you build that support around you and you have a really great time doing it. So um, yeah, I joined the first week, sort of moved over and yeah, won't look back. The question I want to ask you is, what does it mean to now be a premiership captain and be the first one to win a premiership as captain? Oh, like everything, absolutely everything. Like I actually couldn't be um, more proud. Like I think um, to be the to be there from the start, then to take the girls through to win a cup um, and to do it with some of your best mates on the field. Like you spend so much time with these girls, like, literally cry together, you drink together, you laugh together and the best laughs ever. And it's just when you have that much emotion um, year after year and just celebrating, like it's it's just phenomenal. It's the best feeling ever, you know? So pretty, pretty happy. Now, what does the sport of football mean to all four of you, especially being there at Coss Harbour? 
Uh, for me, look, it's again, it's it, like I've just said, it's everything. It's family. So I was, I was talking to one of the girls last night that said, what are you, what are you doing on your Tuesday and Thursday nights now? And it's, it's pretty hard because although sometimes it's cold and it's wet and you don't want to go to training when you don't have it, you really miss it all of a sudden. So um, yeah, for me, like, at risk of sounding like a cliche, it is, it's family. It's, it's your, your friends. It's, it's uh, your physical activity. So I think when you're working that hard to achieve something so great with a group of girls that you love, like it just becomes yeah, everything really easily. Tees just misses all the rub downs. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, look, I'm going to be honest, I'm prone to an injury or three. So uh, you would often find me in the massage rooms. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, we've been blessed to have such a bond, like with our team and um it makes it so easy and so like motivating to go to training, to be able to train with these girls who like are some of your best friends and best mates. And there's no better way to motivate you and do your best at training when you've got that kind of banter, you've got your, your laughs, your cries, like Teeks was saying. Um, but yeah, you spend so much time of the week together. Like you spend your Tuesday, Thursday, sad day, and then you're hung over Sunday. Sometimes together. Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I couldn't have asked for a better team and yeah I think that's partly why I love AFL so much just being able to say I won with the breakers girls I don't know yeah yeah we're all just so supportive I reckon that's the main thing no matter what everyone's doing or what everyone's going through everyone's just supporting each other 100 percent. and there's never never ne like any negativity it's just we're all committed to each other and that's what you need on the field as well. If you got it off the field, on the field works a charm. So, yeah, that's my input. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more with what the girls have said. Exactly right. Do any of you have any future ambitions in the sport? Emily. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emily, I guess Emily. You're take it as on. it comes. Um, I'm actually in Newcastle at the moment. So I'm, that was my last year in breakers um i'm playing for cardiff hawks next year um and i guess it'll just give me more opportunities being closer to sydney and being in a bigger smoke than coffs harbour um but yeah i guess take it as it comes yeah <laughs> i don't have much planned i'm just sticking with the team <laughs> <laughs> um, sarah's going into being the marking sarah's the best marker the, the <laughs> You've ever seen. It's, uh, so she's going to being the marking coach for next year. <laughs> Line up, I'll tell you how to catch a ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just want to continue to play local footy. I just love doing it for the fun of it and, you know, um, being involved in the clubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yet for me. Um, I'm probably undergoing an ACL recon in the next week or two. So um, I, I think I might just come back from a coaching perspective. Um, mm. oh, like Emily ever comes back to just give her a run for her money, I might you know, go a few <laughs> around the oh, track. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. yeah, no, like I, I don't know. I'll be around the club definitely, but I just don't know, you know, what role. Um, so basically you're retiring. No. Well, you know, I, I, I have I have put the boots. I've bronzed my boots, and they're on the bookshelf. So, <laughs> now, of course, I've got to ask this question, which is, and you mentioned, and of course, um, you mentioned about um, wanting to be a coach um, after oh, surgery. No, like I meant just a like a t showing someone how to handball coach. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get out. <laughs> <That's the same. laughs> That's enough. Um, yeah, uh, Gary's got to think I'm taking his gig. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. The question I want to ask all of you is: Tell us about your premiership coach. Bloody Ooh. Gary. <laughs> he's good. Nah, he's he's an absolute crack up, and he gets on with everyone on the team. He's always up for a laugh and. He never gets angry at us. We could be, you know, what it would be like coaching a girls team. We're chatting and all, like, through the whole training session all the time. So, like, 
you only know if he's angry is if he puts an f bomb in there every now and again. Like, <laughs> and, and that is, I think I heard that. I think I heard that word twice this season. So he has a lot of patience for us, like a lot. Yeah. And he gets along with everyone. And he's a he's a bloody good coach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, hats off to Geary because like any sport and I guess it's because it's a still a new sport in Coffs Harbour we've still got those different levels um, of competency um, so he finds a really nice balance between people who know how to handball people who know how to kick and the people who are still like learning and need a bit more like extra patience and stuff like that so it's really good that yeah he's got that balance in place so yeah I like that about him mm. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of other teams are quite envious that we've got the coach we have because of all those reasons. And he's, like, he really puts his heart and soul into it. And his daughter even plays on the team as well. So, you know, it's, um, good for recruitment, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a lot of sacrifices for our team, yeah. He's he, yeah, he's 24-7 he with us, basically. Now, what will be your advice to our listeners and viewers in uh, northern New South Wales that should come down to Coss Harbour? Come on down, like messages, um, message any one of us uh, just on Messenger. Uh, there's there's the Coffs Harbour AFC Instagram um, page. There's two Coffs Harbour uh, AFL um, breakers pages. So uh, one's for players, one's for just community members. Definitely jump on, like our page, get in touch with anyone you see that's writing on there and ask what day our training is. We train Tuesdays and Thursday nights. We're starting pre-season at the end of January. All skill level. Um, yeah, don't ever think that you're not good enough. We're, we're 100% welcome to absolutely anyone who wants to give it a crack because that's exactly what we look for. Yeah. Mm. yeah. If you've yeah, you like had a, any practice with ball sports or anything like that, just come on down. Yeah, like I was saying before, the, the club has been so great in welcoming myself and like any other player that I've seen um, come down this year. So, Definitely don't feel nervous about going down. It's it's a great, um, great club down there. And, of course, whereabouts is your home ground down there, the beautiful Coffs Harbour? Fitzroy Oval. Let's finish up with a couple of lighthearted questions about uh, the team. Now, firstly, who's the comedian in the team? <laughs> Probably takes. <laughs> I'd like to think I am, but I'm actually not that funny. I, just I was just about to say, it. she'd like to think she is. <laughs> oh, come on, Emily. <laughs> uh, probably Bella. 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 Bella Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Bella Grace, she's a crack up. She's got a Surprisingly few funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's intentional half the time. <laughs> no, it's just what comes out of her head. Yeah. <laughs> <I feel so>. <laughs> <laughs> Any good singers and dancers we should know about? Bella Grace and her TikTok dancing. (laughs) (laughs) Her favourite is the world at the moment. Oh, yeah. (laughs) yeah. I can't tell you it's any good to watch, but... (laughs) No, I saw that a few times after the grand final. (laughs) (laughs) Now, someone mentioned before about the fine system a moment ago. Uh, I think right almost at the start of the interview. Now the question I have to ask is, um, who's copped the most fines on the team? I think Cassidy wasn't oh. it? So Cass Cass is a um Cassidy's one of our midfielders. She got um league best and fairest and she is consistently the highest contributor <laughs> to our end of season trip. Um <laughs> every year. <laughs> However, she was outrun this year by someone who made some genuine uh, on and off the field efforts, uh, Gemma Code, who... Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> for reasons that can absolutely not be talked about here, oh, okay. um, <laughs> she copped a few doozies. I think 80% of it is MA15+. plus. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When someone hands you a $50 note and doesn't ask for change, you know. Uh, she- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep, it's all right. no, I see. She's paid for the alcohol anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to ask, is doing this interview part of the fine system? I hope not. No, no, one, needs, no one needs to know about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surely not. I'm, I'm the fines master, so the discretion is on me and I divide vote that we don't get fined. I, I would not and, doubt next season we'll be copping it. 
Yeah. Oh, I was we'll going to say it next season. <laughs> I was going to say if it does, I would have paid for your fines, but that's okay. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, so it turns out it does. It does cost. It's about a hundred dollars a head. Oh, no, no, I haven't got that much money. <laughs> um, now we'll finish off uh, with this one last one, which is: Do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? No, nah, yeah. I don't. I just hope for the best. Yeah, I I try to be really relaxed and chill about things like that. I don't think I do, no. Um, I just have a playlist called Pump Up Bangers and <laughs> I yell <laughs> in my car all the way to somebody. <laughs> That's good. I do. Yeah, I fully do. Um, I have to look, I play music in the morning. I have to eat eggs on toast. I... Um, oh. I have to make sure my shoelaces are done up tight enough and um, I always have to wear a pair of black underwear. I don't know. Just saying. You just got to and ask got, like, kick- about her kicking. Um, I was going to say, I was going to say, you have a bit more like Nick. Nick yeah, Nick I have a bit of a, a Josh Kennedy thing. Like I have to stop <laughs> mouth guard in my socks, t- change the tongue on my shoes, make sure I'm tight enough shoes. Yeah, and do some little prancy dance thing on the kick in I don't know it's a bit ridiculous and <laughs> you know we still get one pointers out of her but we still love her absolutely us. <laughs> yeah look can hit a point post from any direction on the field that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> well all for you thank you so much for giving up your time to join us uh it was awesome watching your team uh play in the grand final on the live stream from here in Melbourne and uh congratulations well fully deserved and hopefully next year you can uh, do it again in 2021. Thanks. Yeah, for hopefully. Us. Thanks, thanks for having thanks us. Thanks so much for having us. No worries. And that's the Cost Harbor Breakers, of course, women's premiership football team. Of course, if you want to get uh, involved in footy, make sure you come up to the most beautiful part of uh, the country, of course, up there in Cost Harbor on the north coast and, of course, of New South Wales and uh, get involved in the sport of footy. There's more on the Smash Board Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Monday edition.